post. Hey, quick little PSA here from the sun god. If you use sunscreen, you're literally blocking yourself from the most important aspect of health, and that is light exposure. Sunscreen blocks UV light. We need UV light. Don't wear sunglasses anymore because your eyes take in how much sunlight is out during the day and actually produces the melanin to protect your skin. I'm not a doctor. Why is nobody talking about this? All these sunscreens are not doing the job they're designed to do. They're meant to protect you from the sun, right? But why then does this chart show that since 1975, the increase in skin cancer rates is going up and up and up the more sunscreen we use makes no sense right it's not having good health outcomes for our populations all sunscreens are filled with toxic chemicals that absorb right in your bloodstream and disrupt your hormones what but i need to protect my skin the cdc said it, the sun's bad for you Bruh. bro just eat a clean diet and use coconut oil as your sunscreen and you're going to be way healthier it's all it takes to make your own animal-based sunscreen so this is an improvised double boiler just an inch of water in there that i'm going to boil two tablespoons of beeswax half cup coconut oil and half cup of tallow melt these mix them together and then i'm going to add the zinc so in my video on bear grills like last week i showed an instagram post or showed something he shared on his instagram story which he was talking about sun cream causing cancer. And yes, I'm not American, so I'm going to be calling it sun cream, not sunscreen, but it is, you know, the exact same thing. And I've actually been wanting to make this video for a while, actually since I made that raw milk influencer TikTok, because it just feels like, you know, with TikTok especially, people are just getting dumber and dumber, fear-mongering about various different things that, that used to be just like accepted science. And what is so frustrating about a lot of these things is things like pasteurizing milk and people wearing sun cream is so people don't like die or develop like horrible diseases and cancer from exposing themselves to the elements. But what we're seeing with a lot of these influencers, they have this concept of the more natural, the better. And things with chemicals in them they're big and scary and you shouldn't use them. And humans should just go outside in the sun, especially if you're a pale-skinned European, you should just go outside all day, see what happens. Obviously, if you're from a country like Australia, where most of the population is descended from English and Irish settlers, then yeah, you know how much skin cancer can ravage people, especially people who have more pale skin, but it's also not exclusive to people who have pale skin and now today we're just having people t saying yeah don't don't wear any sun cream don't protect yourself from radiation just go outside and burn and i think with a lot of things especially like skin cancer because skin cancer is seen as like the least bad one because so many people get it get it treated and they recover and also because it takes years and years to develop, people just don't really see it as an immediate threat. We all collectively know as a society that smoking cigarettes is very likely to give you lung cancer, but so many of us still do it anyway. And because it takes so long to develop, we kind of see it as something in the distance that will never be a reality. And because for many people, it never does become a reality despite them smoking, people just take that as evidence that, yeah, you can maybe just avoid it. And it's the same thing I feel like with sun cream, but also we're getting into like this just pseudoscience promoted by people on TikTok. And some of the stuff you're gonna hear today is just so insane. Like I'm not an expert in dermatology and cancer and stuff like that, but even on the surface, thinking about the lack of critical thinking you have to have to believe these people like are any sort of authority, on this is just so crazy to me and a lot of my videos i focus on like the conservative elements and i'm sure there's a lot of conservatives who do like believe in this kind of anti-sun screen culture and we had a lot of conservatives talking about raw milk although i think that makes more sense but what we're seeing more and more is just disinformation that centers around some sort of like vague anti corporatism maybe anti-capitalism where people just think every corporate product is designed to just poison and kill you and the less you use of those products the better your life will be and the more healthy you will be and a lot of this stems from a lack of trust in authority which totally makes sense like we see it with things like the pandemic the cdc has to play politics 
and play politics with the world's biggest capitalist economy. So it will tell people to go back to work and like you don't have to wear a mask and stuff during the height of the pandemic because they're pressured to by the government, right? We have things like the FDA as well, which is still like a political body, which does do important and good work, but also lets things slide, especially when it comes to things like pharmaceuticals. That's before we talk about how Big Pharma is totally in bed with the government, has at many times poisoned people for profit and got away with it. Think about the Sacklers, Purdue and the opioid crisis, which has estimated to kill like 600,000 Americans over like 25 years or something, right? So people should distrust authority. People should distrust big business. But I think it can get to such a point, people just don't know what to believe. And because you don't have the critical thinking skills of, yeah, I know like pharmaceutical companies are terrible, but I also know the trusted sciences, you should protect your skin from uv rays and stuff for a lot of people those two thoughts can't exist in their head and when someone starts saying something like oh yeah sun cream is the thing that causes skin cancer not the sun itself they just start to believe it because of these influencers who seem like they know what they're talking about so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to outline like very basic facts about um skin cancer about sun cream and about obviously why you should wear it if you're going outside during peak hours in the sun then we're going to break down the three different types of anti-sun cream influencers we're looking at and conspiracy theories they push and then i just want to watch a bunch of tiktoks and basically just react to them i have watched them multiple times it's not my first impression but each of them have a different thing i want to talk about so all of that coming up for you today please like the video also follow me on social media at the cavernacle on instagram and also my travel instagram consider becoming a patron trying to build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible benefits include access to videos early and ad free and also access to the private patrons discord server with all of that out the way, let's get into the video. So most of us obviously learn at a very young age about things like sun cream, skin cancer, and why it's so bad to get burnt by the sun. But let's just break it down in a very simple format with an article from the BBC. How does sunscreen work and what does SPF mean? Most of us are familiar with sun protection factor, the big number on the front of sunscreen bottles. The higher the number, the greater the protection. Many brands also carry a five-star rating too, and that is also important to understand. SPF tells you how much protection your sunscreen provides from UVB radiation. The star system tells you the percentage of UVA radiation that is absorbed by the sun cream in comparison to how much UVB is absorbed. Ultraviolet A and B refer to different wavelengths of radiation from the sun that enter the Earth's atmosphere. UVA is associated with aging of the skin and pigmentation as well as skin cancer, particularly squamous cell carcinoma. It can affect human skin even through glass. UVB causes sunburn and is linked in types of skin cancer. The SPF number on a bottle of sunscreen refers to how much UVB it allows in, not how much it blocks. A sunscreen with SPF 15 allows 1 15th of the sun's rays to reach your skin, or about 7%. So it filters out about 93% of UVB rays, while SPF 30 filters out about 97%. This means if you could stay in the sun for 10 minutes unprotected without burning, SPF 15 would in theory give you 15 times that protection or two and a half hours before you would burn. So this is an important thing to remember for later because people say, if sun cream and sunscreen are so effective, why have the rates of skin cancer gone up um, since it's become a big thing, right? And this is important. So the levels of protection assume sunscreen has been applied in ideal conditions. In reality, most people do not apply sunscreen perfectly and it can rub off with sweat or while in the water. Experts think most people only apply half the recommended quantity. So like I said, keep that fact in mind. Now, how does the sun and UV cause cancer? So too much UV radiation from the sun or sunbeds can damage the DNA in our skin cells. DNA tells our cells how to function. If enough DNA damage builds up over time, it can cause cells to grow out of control, which leads to skin cancer. Getting sunburn increases your risk of cancer. Sunburn is skin damage and your body's response to try to repair it. It's a clear sign that the DNA in your skin cells has been damaged too much by UV radiation. Getting sunburn once doesn't mean you'll definitely get skin cancer, but the more times you get sunburn, the higher your risk of skin cancer. 
Sunburn doesn't have to be raw, peeling, or blistering. For people with darker skin tones, your skin may feel irritated, tender, or itchy. And for people with lighter tones, it may also go pink or red in the sun. Skin cancer can grow down through the layers of the skin and spread to other parts of the body. Those are the basic facts long established in science. People have different tolerance for the sun based on their skin color, but also, yeah, you can still get burned in a non-traditional way. Like I haven't been severely sunburned I don't even remember the last time I've been severely sunburned. I have been burnt, like, very lightly in the way it says, like, maybe red face, playing football, even when I wear sun cream. Because most of the time that I'm long exposed to the sun is when I play at football matches in the summer. I actually played one um, just under two weeks ago where, thankfully, I did wear it. But even then, after about two hours, you're right directly in the sun at, you know, 12 to 2 o'clock midday at its peak you definitely feel it regardless. And that's why I think it's just so, so crazy that people with, you know, the Irish complexion or an English complexion like myself feel okay doing this and feel safe doing this. You really have to go down a conspiracy rabbit hole to believe this stuff. Because I would say with like not wearing sun cream and exposing yourself to the sun without it, why it kind of like boggles my mind as a conspiracy theory is it's so easy to feel the negative effects of the sun and most people in their life who live in hot countries or have been on holiday in hot countries would have very likely have felt it and you would have very likely been burnt before. So you have that like painful memory of what the sun can do to you and you're still doubting that repeated exposure in this way could lead to worst effects. You can feel it destroying your skin and you're still doubting like science. So just a breakdown by the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey, sunscreen skepticism and examination of sunscreen and sun exposure conspiracy theories. It just breaks down the three main ones which you're gonna see in this video or if you don't see as much in this video, you'll probably see out in the wild. So these conspiracies fall into three main categories. So sunscreen causes cancer or is otherwise harmful. Some influencers suggest sunscreen use causes vitamin D deficiency, which they claim is more harmful than the potential risk of skin cancer. Others insist that chemical sunscreens themselves cause cancer. Some even claim that chemical sunscreens can be found in neurons 10 years after use, which they interpret as further proof of sunscreen's impact. Many claim chemical sunscreens cook or burn your skin when exposed to sunlight or inhibit cellular respiration. The most extreme assertions are in the group claim that getting sunburned is less harmful to the DNA than the cell damage they believe results from being in the sun while wearing sunscreen. So another one which feels like more popular on like wellness TikTok. So sunscreen divorces us from our nature and the health benefits of the sun. Influencers with a more spiritual bent who often call themselves sun worshippers Focus on the naturalness of sun exposure and the way in which sunscreen inhibits this natural, ancient relationship. Sunscreen divorces us from our natural state and interrupts the health benefits we receive from the sun, including but not limited to preventing cancer, strengthening muscles and nerves, curing baldness, eliminating spinal conditions, lowering blood pressure, purifying blood, increasing testosterone and lowering the risk of breast cancer. Importantly, some influencers insist that none of these benefits can occur if you wear sunglasses because like sunscreen, sunglasses disrupt the natural combination of UVA and UVB light. Sunscreen and sunglasses, they say, get in the way of the body's ability to act as a photoreceptor and process sunlight as it's meant to. Influencers note that without the sun, other creatures would die. And thus, it cannot make sense that the sun has singled us humans out and decided to kill us while providing life to other things. So one more, pharmaceutical companies invented sunscreen to sicken the public. The most extreme anti-sunscreen influencers insist that the only explanation of such widespread use of a harmful substance must be a conspiracy to sicken and weaken the population. The goal of this is to increase the profit margins of companies who sell medicines to fix the associated health issues that they insist sunscreen causes. Healthy individuals would be a threat to the medical industry, and so it must have created sunscreen in order to boost its profit margins, they say. 
So this is probably not helped when the FDA does like recalls of various different like sunscreens and stuff. But this is also like quite rare that this happens and I think is a good thing because it shows the FDA is actually doing its job, which it doesn't always do, but it obviously plays more into the conspiracy theories. And also like we're reading out three separate ones, but I think a lot of people that we're going to see today, they just believe all of these like mixed together, like the anti-corporate stuff is always mixed in with weird wellness stuff as well. So um, I think first, let's have a look at a few TikToks from Bear Grylls' favorite, and that is Paul Saladino, who used to be a proponent of an all-meat diet, but has actually gone back on that. And he's made various videos on why you shouldn't wear most like corporate sunscreen. And he also has a video of him cooking up his own, which just seems like a recipe for disaster if you're going to follow this advice um i wouldn't be doing this myself but let's listen to some of the stuff he says what in the holy goodness jeez let's talk about this guys sunscreen bullshit or not almost all sunscreens out there are going to contain compounds homosalate octocrylene avabenzone octabenzone that are absorbed through your skin and excreted in your poop and your pee that means they go through your whole body these compounds are associated with cancer and they're endocrine disruptors, hormonal disruptors. Most sunscreen has also contained parabens, other endocrine disruptors, xenoestrogens, and seed oils that are high in linoleic acid, a fragile fatty acid that will be incorporated into your cell membranes and lead to more sun damage. Most sunscreen is pure bullshit, pure bullshit. Protect your skin by use sunscreens based in zinc and animal fats. This stuff is bullshit. So before we show him like cooking up his own sun cream, something this guy has always done in his grift, he just like shouts out random ingredients and chemicals in his lectures about why certain foods and like sun cream is bad and stuff. And because this guy is tanned, he's clearly in good shape and he has a lot of followers as well. People think he knows what he's talking about, but he's just using those words to scare you. Like, I don't know what any of those words mean. I don't know what he's referring to. I don't know why he thinks they cause cancer when they're in sunscreen. Maybe he's read something that suggests maybe overexposure to some of it causes high rates of cancer. I don't even fucking know. But what I do know is this guy probably doesn't even know what most of these things are, and he definitely hasn't given me any evidence. He's just trying to scare me into trusting him because... Go like pick up anything, like go pick up anything and just read the ingredients. There's going to be a few there that you don't know. And if you started shouting at someone like, oh my God, this product has this in it. That is so bad for you. You might start scaring people. But yeah, he's always done this. And just the myth that sunscreen causes cancer, there's no evidence for that. There is just like no evidence that wearing sun cream gives you cancer. That's just so insane on the surface. And shouting a bunch of complex chemical words at us hopefully doesn't have an impact on anyone, but this is what this guy has always done. I remember him like years ago, he used to go around supermarkets and loads of people copy this now. He'll just like grab something off the shelf and start shouting like the ingredients, which of course you and probably him don't know anything about just to scare you and get you to trust him because it is a grift at the end of the day. He wants to be the authority figure in your life about healthy eating and things like sun cream. He also said he drank raw milk and I talked about him in that video as well because in regards to that, he does the exact same thing. When things like pasteurization and sun cream were created to protect humans. But anyway, let's keep going. He actually starts cooking up his own sunscreen like he's water white or something. So take a look at this. This is all it takes to make your own animal-based sunscreen. So this is an improvised double boiler, just an inch of water in there that I'm gonna boil. Two tablespoons of beeswax, half cup coconut oil, and half cup of tallow. Melt these, mix them together, and then I'm gonna add the zinc. Removed it from the heat, stir this for a couple minutes, let it cool. When it starts to get a little more mushy, use a hand mixture and whip air into it to give it more of a texture. The end product is a completely natural, highly effective, easily spreadable sunscreen that goes on your skin and will last for a very long time. 
This homemade animal-based sunscreen is so much better than traditional sunscreens. This is your answer. Get that bullshit out of your life and start using a really good quality sunscreen. It's not a good idea to attempt to make your own sunscreen like this. Believe it or not, sunscreen formulation is actually pretty complex and it's not as simple as adding zinc oxide powder to some emollients, some fats, whipping it up into a cream, rubbing it on your skin, and boom, you have a sunscreen. Because the zinc oxide particles, they need to distribute evenly across the skin surface. When you just add the zinc oxide like this into a cream and whip it up, well, you're gonna get zinc oxide that clumps together, and so you're going to have holes where you do not have any protection whatsoever. So this is not a good idea. Now, I know that people who tend to follow these types of accounts have zero interest in wearing sunscreen. I can show you study after study after study saying that sunscreens are safe and effective, and a lot of people are just not interested. If you are not interested in sunscreen, rather than attempting to make your own ineffective one, I instead suggest seeking shade and covering up. This account also makes the claim that this is a highly effective sunscreen, but in order to determine sunscreen efficacy, you need to do what's called MED testing, which in order for him to be making this claim, I'm assuming he has done, so maybe one day he'll provide us with that data and maybe he'll even provide us with an SPF value. One can only hope. I watched another video which talked about this homemade sunscreen. It said, while it might give you like a little protection from the sun, it's really not a good replacement. And it's just so much effort as well. Like I know sunscreen can be expensive, but if you're someone who wants to wear some sort of sun cream, whatever, are you really just gonna watch some guy on TikTok and then start cooking up your own? instead of actually using stuff that's been tested and regulated and stuff. So I wanna play like a Saladino wannabe. Saw this guy, he keeps talking about like, apparently because skin cancer rates have gone up since the 70s uh, and since people have been adopting sun cream, it means that, you know, it's clearly like not working. Why is nobody talking about this? All these sunscreens are not doing the job they're designed to do. They're meant to protect you from the sun, right? But why then does this chart show that since 1975, the increase in skin cancer rates is going up and up and up. The more sunscreen we use makes no sense, right? It's not having good health outcomes for our populations. So the question to be asked is, is it the toxic chemical concoction derived from petroleum that you're putting on your skin and absorbing that's actually contributing to the cancers or is it something else? We need answers and we need to work it out because this stuff isn't the, doing the job it's designed for. Summer sunscreen time and what's the problem? Well, essentially you're putting stuff on your skin that gets absorbed into your body. Now, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, the data suggests the more we've been using sunscreen over the last 50 years, the more skin cancer we've been getting. Now, I'm not sure why that is. I don't know. Science doesn't know, but I think we should be asking the question because typical sunscreens contain a ton of petrochemicals that are going into your skin. I don't think that's a good idea. So those TikToks remind me of that recent Mooncat video where she's talking about like evolutionary psychology, I think. And she's talking about how all the academic work around it is both like very old and often like never tested again or tested in like a few people. And why I'm thinking about that is because I often like flash studies up on the screen to give some legitimacy to what they're saying. So this guy flashes that chart at you. And I actually went looking, like, like I reversed image search that on Google. I couldn't find the original paper that it's from, but I did see loads of people just posting this one picture. But let's just say it's accurate, right? Like since people have started using sun cream and sunscreen, um, skin cancer rates have gone up in the population. And this guy can't think of any other reason for that apart from it actually must be the toxic chemicals in sun cream giving everyone skin cancer because they're rubbing it all over their skin. Now, for something like that, you'd think most people would have to be wearing sun cream every single day. Most people don't do that. I know it's now a new trend that people do do it every day. Most people don't. So could it be that people put on sun cream and then go out in the sun way more than they used to because back in the day, people knew it gave you skin cancer but there wasn't as many things to protect you from the sun apart from wrapping up. But now, and since, you know, the last couple of decades, stick on a load of sun cream. You can walk around at the beach and not really worry about getting burnt. You can get tanned. 
more safely and easier and stuff like that. But of course, a lot of people have a full sense of security where you've put on enough sun cream and suddenly you think, you know, you don't have to top it up or you go in the sea and it comes off or you sweat and it comes off. And like that BBC article outlined earlier, a lot of people don't even put enough on in the first place. So yeah, you'll get that full sense of security. You'll keep going out in the sun way more than people would used to back in the day. You might live in a country like Australia, which is always hot or somewhere like Thailand where I've lived for a little bit and the sun was just insane. With the sun cream, it gives you that extra protection in your mind. And it's likely the more people who do this, the higher rates of skin cancer. Also not factoring in that study as well. A lot of skin cancer is also caused by tanning beds. And also a lot of people do tanning beds and then also get tanned in the sun. It's not exclusive. So also a lot of people think the more tanned you get as well, through going outside and using sun cream, there comes a point where you don't actually have to wear it anymore. And that's another thing that this guy didn't acknowledge. And with tanning beds as well, you do that indoors and then you go to the beach on holiday, you think you either don't have to wear much or you don't have to wear any. So your skin could still be getting burned, but also is getting exposed to the radiation. And long term, that will affect your cells and maybe give you skin cancer. Those are both real reasons. And for most people, even if you're unsure, doesn't that seem a lot more likely than, oh, actually, every single sunscreen product is just designed to give you cancer and no one talks about this ever. Like, it's the biggest scandal in history that's never been exposed. Like I said, there have been some recalls in the past and that gives so much ammo to these conspiracy theories. But yeah, he's just cherry-picking some data, giving his own spin on it, just to try and scare you into not buying sunscreen anymore. So let's have a look at a few more. These are just like dumb ones, but I thought they were worth talking about. So I'm not a big sunscreen guy because most of them are just chemicals you spray on your skin that actually causes skin cancer and messes up your hormones. But the Texas sun is so strong and I'm outside like five or six hours a day and my nose is actually starting to get damaged. This is what I take, this is not an ad. This is the best thing you can take. It's zinc oxide, so it's minerals. Doesn't contain harmful chemicals that mess you up. So zinc oxide is the- So you don't believe in sunscreen? Never. Can I tell you something? I have a problem with Australia. Yeah. I went to Bondi Beach and I got outside. Some guy goes, here, take some sunscreen. And I said, you get that cancer water away from me, okay? <laughs> Three hours later, I was getting rushed to the emergency room because I had sun poisoning. It was probably the worst experience I've ever had. Now I'm kind of like, dude, I would rather put on the sunscreen. Ah, uh, good old sunscreen. What the fuck are you doing? You realize that shit kills your test, right? You realize all sunscreens are filled with toxic chemicals that absorb right in your bloodstream and disrupt your hormones? What? But I need to protect my skin. The CDC said it, the sun's bad for you. Bruh. Bro, just eat a clean diet and use coconut oil as your sunscreen and you're going to be way healthier, way more tan, and you're not going to be a burnt-ass tomato. As you guys know, I do not wear sunscreen, but I also don't let myself get super sunburned. So I want to talk about the natural things that I do to protect my skin and prevent sunburns without wearing sunscreen. The first thing I do is I use coconut oil instead of sunscreen. Coconut oil works about 30% as well as sunscreen does, except you're not slathering yourself in chemicals. The second thing I do, and I actually just found out about this one, I think it's super cool, is I don't wear sunglasses anymore because your eyes take in how much sunlight is out during the day and actually produces the melanin to protect your skin. The next thing I do is I go into shade when I feel like I've been in the sun too long. I just get out of the sun. Another thing I do is when I feel my skin starting to get hot in the sun, I'll go in the ocean or I'll go in the pool and I'll cool down because actually cooling down the skin can help and prevent sunburns. I also know that watching the sunrise and watching the sunset can help just regulate your body and help you produce what you need to prevent sunburns as well. So yeah, I like to call these like the knucklehead anti-sunscreen influencers. Like there isn't really any attempt to even back it up with science. It's just to say random shit about like testosterone and using coconut oil. Although I do love how a lot of these people, apart from that last one, they do admit they need sunscreen. And also I do like how a couple of these people are like, yeah, I don't believe in it because it gives you cancer, but then it burnt the shit out of me. And now I'm kind of thinking, yeah, I, I probably should wear it. And that's what I was saying at the start is this is why it's so bizarre. Here you have people who believe that sunscreen was bad for you and they wouldn't wear it based on conspiracy theories I saw on TikTok when we all know how like scary it can be and we all know people 
who survived, who've probably suffered like really serious sunburn, which has really hurt at the very least. This guy, who used to be Logan Paul's co-host, he's saying he got rushed to the emergency with some poisoning. And then most people in their own life have been burnt at some point or another. So you automatically know that, yeah, sun cream is good for protecting you. And most people aren't into tanning culture. So yeah, the thought of just, even though you don't know much about it, just sticking some cream on the one week holiday you go on to like Benidorm every year, that's probably worth it at the very least. And then you look into it, as most scientists say, you don't want to expose yourselves to UV light from the sun in this quantity without having something to mitigate that. And even if you're not burning, it can still be really bad for your skin and maybe one day give you skin cancer. So please don't fall down this wellness rabbit hole. Like you can eat loads of like nice natural foods and you can do like natural things without being stupid and not learning the lessons of humans in the past because a lot of human invention was done in response to loads of people dying from stuff. That is how medicine has developed over the years. Big Pharma and this huge capitalist industry of pharmaceuticals, that's a more modern invention. Health, medicine, science, that has been done throughout humanity's entire existence. We've even seen orangutans make their own medicine for cuts and stuff, right? It's just basic ape human instinct to make medicines for ourselves so we can survive longer. So don't forsake all those people who died from skin cancer from the sun because they didn't have access to things like sunscreen back in the day and they were forced to work outside their whole lives. Don't forsake things like pasteurization of milk because raw milk has led to the deaths of millions and millions of people throughout history. Just because humans used to do it because they didn't know any better doesn't mean that's the optimal way for human beings to live. I'm not downplaying how evil Big Pharma is or how much chemical shit we're exposed to as a result of capitalist profiteering but what i am saying is there's a reason we do certain things and when it's so easy to see the effects of not doing something like wearing sunscreen please just do not believe any of these wellness influencers and don't think they are interested in your health at all they're just grifters some of them might believe their own bullshit like andrew huberman but at the same time they want to sell you shit as well and they want you to reject trusted science and instead favor their pseudoscience so they can sell you podcasts, books, or supplements or something. So that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.